What's up Squatchers? Coming back at you with another one. I know this has been a long awaited video, but you know, with everything going on, um, money, the pandemic, all that stuff, it's just been a, a real hold up on this project. But I'm super excited that we're gonna get started back on this and uh, I'm gonna bring you guys along for what I've got done so far and what I still need to do on this Toyota project with the 1KZ. Um, so without further ado, let's get started okay guys so i'm going to try to keep this quick so the biggest problem that i had with this engine is that it did not bolt up to the transmission i actually had to go and find a different bell housing online which came out of china china um that bolted this 1kz up to up to the r150 f transmission so got that dude off uh ebay to bolt up the problem was is that it was a little bit longer than the other one so on the engine mounts these engine mounts were like three to four inches way over here in and towards the front so i ended up having to build a adapter on that back of the transmission so i could slide everything back into place to get these to line up and then the next problem was was that the engine was a little sitting a little too high so we're gonna cut the engine mounts out and lower them down a little bit and then re-weld them back in for today's video okay so after we get the engine mounts fixed and we get the engine lowered the next project is going to be removing this power steering pump and just completely removing it doing away with that and then i'm gonna underneath down here install a rack and pinion setup off of this cross member here i'm just going to come out with some plates put it with rack and pinion so that way this doesn't touch the bottom of the pan and then i'll have a rack and pinion set up which will probably give it better steering and all that good stuff anyways so not too much of a bad deal the other things that I've already done, and I didn't get on camera, on this throttle body here, I removed the throttle uh, pulley system on this uh, throttle uh, throttle body setup, and I capped everything off because we're not going to need it because I went with the uh, mechanical injection pump here. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to rig up a bracket here for the throttle cable so that way it comes down here and I'll have a bar so that way as it pulls, it'll push. It's kind of hard to um, really show you what I'm gonna do, but when, once I get to there, you'll see that I'm gonna make a bracket to where as it pulls, it'll push this, and that'll activate everything that I need for the fuel and air. So I was able to do away with this throttle body, and this will be pretty much its own controller. I uh, don't have any, I mean, this is pretty much one wire fire right here so pretty simple setup it's going to be uh easy and um pretty pretty well maintenance free the other thing that i did is i went ahead and drained the fuel out of the tank and i took the neck for the, where the fuel pump the your you know when you pump gas that neck i actually just beat the insert out so it'll take a diesel insert now and i'll be able to fill it up with diesel so that's pretty much what i've got done so far so today what I'm going to be working on is pulling this engine back out and redoing the engine mounts down there to where they'll be lower. And I'm going to cut and re-weld them in and then we'll put the engine back in and then probably in a later video we'll go over the rack and pinion uh, steering setup and how I'm going to tackle that. So it's kind of cold out here today in Texas. It's a... Uh, it's February and we got the little bit of a wind blast from the north and so we're kind of dealing with cold weather and all that stuff so we're gonna try to do our best to get as much in the video as we can but basically we're gonna be pulling this engine and redoing the engine mounts and getting it back in so that way we can figure out where that rack and pinion and everything is gonna set up and then from there it's just a matter of hooking everything up radiator power steering lines fuel lines exhaust all that good stuff so uh come along for the ride and we'll see you in there 
Okay guys, now that we uh, got the engine out, <clears throat> we can go ahead and start working on these and engine mounts. Getting these cut out here and lowered down. I'm gonna cut them off, re-weld them in a little bit lower. That way the engine will sit a little lower and it should, everything should fit. So, okay. Cool. Yeah. One done. Now we just need to cut that off. Grind it down. Grind this down a little bit. Weld it back on. No, we're done. Okay, now that we cut the uh, engine mounts off, we're just gonna cut the back piece off. Leftover down. Okay, guys, so unfortunately, the weather got a little bit nasty and uh, we actually got snow down here in Texas, so the project uh, kind of was under a crunch time and so I couldn't quite get everything recorded. But after we got the mounts welded in, we got the engine put back in. As you can see here, let me see, right there, they are welded in. The welds are not the prettiest. I am not a welder by any means, um, but I did get it in there. It's holding, um, you know, so everything, everything looks pretty good. The engine was actually lowered down enough to where we were able to sit the hood down and it does clear right here on the hood so looks like everything should be able to shut so i think that's going to do it for today guys in this video uh got the engine mounts lowered in um re-welded in uh, i think next time we are going to try to attack that uh, power steering gearbox and attempt to manufacture a rack and pinion conversion kit the other thing i'm gonna have to do is probably custom make a steering shaft so that'll be fun so hang in there guys and we'll get this all all put in there in the next one. Alright, thanks.